Emirates airline chairman Sir Tim Clark has repeated calls on Airbus to develop the A380neo aircraft equipped with next-generation engines. His request seems a little closer because it seems that airlines have also rediscovered the value of the Super Jumbo many years after its first takeoff. In fact, building a Neo is not very difficult for the manufacturer. But strangely, the company's actions have not shown interest in the idea. So why doesn't Airbus build the A380 Neo? How easy is it to build a Neo? Let's find out in today's episode. But before we start, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be the first to see our next videos. Now let's dive in. A 380 Neo is not a strange idea. It has appeared before. In 2014, media reported that Airbus was discussing an improved and stretched version of the A380 with at least six customers called the A380 Neo, which would be equipped with new engines and would accommodate 50 more passengers. Customer deliveries are even planned for around 2020 or 2021. However, that idea eventually faltered. It is evident that while the new engines will improve the A380's efficiency, the main issue with the aircraft will remain unresolved. That's its excess carrying capacity. Although there are already a lot of seats in the existing version, adding 50 more will make it increasingly harder for airlines who have long had trouble filling their spacious interiors. It is analyzed that aircraft operators need to fill about 85% of the aircraft to make it profitable for them. So that means most of 380 flights are at a loss. The NEO will probably help reduce break-even capacity somewhat, but if there is no sign of a significant increase in passenger numbers, there will be no return in profits. So Airbus finally abandoned this idea and put an end to the production of the A380 aircraft in 2021. However, the door for the aircraft is not really closed yet. In a surprising turn of events in recent years, the aviation landscape has become chaotic. There has never been more demand for air travel in history. A continuing pilot shortage combined with a slow pace of new aircraft production has led to a mismatch in capacity demand, with the number of people wanting to fly far exceeding the total number of seats available. And looking at this context, the huge size of the A380 is what airlines are really looking forward to. Airlines have returned them to the skies and their resale prices have increased significantly. Seizing the opportunity, Emirates called on Airbus to reconsider the A380neo. But the manufacturers really didn't care much, even though after all they could squeeze more performance out of the airframe for very little money. So why is it so cheap to build an A380neo? It seems the, its current engine is pretty bad. Airbus reluctantly decided to power the airplane with the GP7200 and Trent 900 during the initial program development because they had no choice. According to John Leahy, former CCO of Airbus, he expects this engine to bring a real leap in fuel economy. They only bring modest profits, though. He went on to say that he had been assured by engine suppliers that a significant improvement in engine performance would not occur for at least 10 more years. However, GE and Rolls-Royce announced the GENX and Trent 1000 to power the rival 787 in just four years. Furthermore, the engine was a huge step up from the one in the A380. Depending on the engine type, they are 10 to 15% more efficient. And as quick as a flash, the A380's engines were outdated even before its first flight. Assuming the Trent 1000 is in fact 10% more efficient than the Trent 900, that means that if the A380 is equipped with the Trent 1000, the aircraft will achieve a 10% increase in efficiency. But Airbus will certainly not choose the Trent 1000 for powering the NEO because it now has a new, more advanced generation of engines. The point to emphasize here is that the plane's engines are so weak that if Airbus chose to upgrade them and make no changes to the fuselage or wings, it could achieve a 15% performance increase at a minimum. To highlight Airbus's advantage when building from NEO from the A380, consider its competitor from Boeing. The 777X achieved a similar 15% advantage over the first generation 777, but see, it needs both a new engine and a specially designed new wing to achieve that. And of course, as usual, this increases the cost and complexity of the aircraft development program. The fact that the NEO will get the same level of improvement without much upgrading other than an engine swap is something Airbus is worth doing. And in case Airbus wants to take things to a new level, 
They may undoubtedly go back to Airbus's proposal for the A380 Plus in 2017. When it was first released, the aircraft had a number of specific modifications intended to increase its fuel efficiency, such as newly adjusted wing spoilers and a redesigned cabin. This will decrease fuel consumption overall by roughly 4%. The Plus has never been released, despite Airbus investing a great deal of time and energy in its design. This implies that it will be relatively simple if they develop the NEO version now. It can also boost performance by around 20% when paired with the new engine. All things considered, this is a huge financial benefit for Airbus, because the manufacturer typically needs to develop an entirely new aircraft, which might cost tens of billions of dollars, in order to achieve a 20% fuel savings. However, Airbus can produce a NEO for maybe a few billion dollars, thus it would seem to make sense to release this upgraded model of the aircraft. But can Airbus really do it? At this year's Paris Air Show, Airbus's head of commercial marketing, Stan Sparberg, shared his perspective on the aircraft. My favorite plane as a passenger is a 380. And we're still very proud of the 380 as our family member. Sure. Now, it is in the past. I don't believe personally that it'll come back. But as I said, the focus of Airbus is to listen to its customers and then make sure that we can address their needs. Yeah. So why didn't they listen to Emirates' call for a NEO? For me, again, it comes back to the requirements of the market, to requirements of our customers. And today, the important thing for them is to have this balance of risk and, you know, and revenue that they can generate for them. Indeed, the A380 is so big that it only has one variant. It can really only fly one type of route, high traffic missions between major hubs. NEO will be more efficient, but it won't be any more flexible. Looking at how messy the airline market has been in recent years, if a global recession were to occur, the number of airlines buying NEO would be in the minority. The inflexibility of the Airbus A380 stands in sharp contrast to that of the second largest model, the 350. The airplane is adaptable and may be changed to fit any kind of business plan. It is capable of flying low-density, ultra-long haul routes, high-density hub-to-hub routes, and much more. The largest A350 type available right now is the 350-1000, which is little smaller than the A380. However, experts point out that Airbus could always expand the fuselage of the A350 to produce a more effective substitute if demand for the large jets remains. 350 has the potential to fill more gaps and truly adapt to a constantly changing market. Stan believes that the A350-1000 is well poised to be a good replacement for the 777 and A380. He emphasized that with the presence of the 351,900 and A330neo, they have an excellent wide-body fleet that can meet the needs of all the different business models currently on the market. But even if Airbus's demand for the neo is truly met, some obstacles remain. It will be difficult for them to figure out where exactly to build the neo while Airbus shuts down a 380 production in 2021. Instead, it is a giant facility with an A320 assembly line. And for Airbus's commercial future, of course, nothing is more important than expanding production of the aircraft. There is never a possibility of spending a large sum of money to convert the factory to rebuild the A380neo. Because of that, it seems like the effort to save money for development is considered to be zero. In short, building a new aircraft is extremely complicated, not only the cost, but also the technical difficulties need to be carefully calculated. Considering the supply chain and customer needs is also important, the NEO may be a case of being built cheaply and easily, but Airbus is not confident about the program's success. So the company's attention and resources are diverted to other plans, and it means they will not reopen the path to the A380 program. On the contrary, on the side of rival Boeing, the company does not seem to hesitate in researching to launch new aircraft models to target markets with high travel demand from customers. Boeing's newest aircraft is the 777-8, which is the largest twin-engine wide-body aircraft currently in production with the goal of filling the mid-range market segment. This aircraft has been improved in both wings and engines to provide better performance. However, it has not yet won the trust of airlines. And if you want to know the reason, click on the link on the screen.